Well, topping the news for this hour, it's the bill lawmakers call necessary for national security and that cyber advocates say puts our civil liberties at stake. This evening, the cybersecurity bill known as CISPA passed in a House vote of 248 to 168. The Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act allows companies to give private customer information to the government. This includes the National Security Agency, the FBI, and the Department of Homeland Security. During the debate, a Massachusetts congressman got all worked up over the proposed law. Take a listen. Now let's talk about what this bill would do. Could companies share personal information about consumers with other companies, even if that information had nothing to do with cybersecurity? Yes. Would companies be free from liability if they share that personal information of every American? Yes. Could the government use personal information to spy on Americans? Yes. And while supporters say the legislation is needed to stop cyber espionage, the online community is outraged over what the bill could do for citizens' online freedoms. Even the Obama administration is now coming out against it. Here's part of the official statement. It states, quote, Without clear legal protections and independent oversight, information sharing legislation will undermine the public's trust in the government as well as in the Internet by undermining fundamental privacy, confidentiality, civil liberties, and consumer protections. For the reasons stated herein, if H.R. 3523 were presented to the president, his senior advisors would recommend that he veto the bill. And now with the bill headed to the Senate, we want to know exactly what does this mean for your online privacy. And to discuss this, I'm joined now by Declan McCullough, CNET News correspondent. Hi, Declan. So first off, I want to get your reaction to the House passing this bill just moments ago. Well, it is just moments ago, so this is really timely. A few weeks ago, I would have said this was a done deal, that the vote would have been overwhelming, but a combination of a veto threat, you had some Republicans like Ron Paul coming out against it, uh, even some committee chairmen, and, and, and a, a grassroots wave of opposition. So that made the vote closer than it would have been, but it still went through by a comfortable margin. So uh, it went through, and Declan, can we talk a little bit more about what this means for citizens' online privacy? Well, the impetus behind the bill is a perfectly reasonable one. Uh, let's allow more information sharing from the federal government to the private sector. And you know, if the feds have some secret weapon that's going to let companies fend off attacks from other countries, Russia and China keep getting mentioned, that's great. Uh, the problem is that the bill also allows information to flow the other direction. It allows internet providers to open their networks to the feds. It allows companies to turn over customer records. It doesn't require them to, but it allows them. And that by itself is still worrisome. Now, one of the more, more controversial things about this is the fact that it would trump existing laws that do aim to protect citizen privacies. Can you talk about that? Yeah, the most controversial section of CISPA is the language that said, notwithstanding any other portion of law, companies can share info what they want, as long as it's for what they call a cybersecurity purpose. Now, we have laws on the books like privacy laws, uh, federal education records laws, medical uh, records laws, uh, f um, laws protecting the privacy of gun owners, perhaps. All these laws exist for a reason, and so it's kind of weird to say we're just going to ignore each one of them. This becomes kind of this uber law that trumps uh, the other ones, a super law. And let's let's at least have more debate about that. Um, the, the, the House leadership didn't even allow amendments, so no amendments were proposed to get, get rid of that language. That by itself is, is the most worrisome section. Now, um, is there a way, Declan, to tweak or fix the bill to make it more reasonable? Well, if the bill said... Uh, the U.S. government, the Department of Homeland Security, can share secret classified defense, uh, internet defense information with the private sector. I don't think a whole lot of people would have been worried. Uh, but the bill had information going the other direction as well. Uh, and internet companies loved it for information they could receive. And internet users, uh, over uh, 800,000 last I checked, or around 800,000 signed the petition, were worried about information that could flow the other direction. So if it were just information coming from the feds, that's a way to fix it. I don't think too many people would be freaked out. Now, major companies are supporting this bill. Corporations like Google, like Facebook, and these are companies that oppose SOPA, but now they're backing CISPA. Why is that? What do they have to gain? 
Yeah, Facebook has been out in front. Google's, um, I, I think, now um, technically neutral. Uh, maybe they're doing stuff behind the scenes, but they're they're officially neutral. And but every technology trade association uh, of any consequence has been enthusiastic about this. Uh, and 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 this different. The difference is uh, with SOPA, you had this al very nice political alignment or coalition between internet users and internet companies, and that's a really powerful force. And that defeated SOPA. Uh, but now you have internet. Companies Companies and internet users kind of at loggerheads, and when you don't have that alliance, privacy loses, and uh, we saw it here today. Now, supporters of this bill, Declan, say that something needs to be done to fight online espionage. Um, I want to read you a couple of passages from an op-ed written by Representative Mike Rogers and Representative Dutch Ru uh, Rupersberger. Um, first one here is every morning in China. Thousands uh, are, um, are, well, I'm going to start here. China has stolen from U.S. companies the amount of intellectual property equal to 50 times the current print collection of the Library of Congress. And they go on now to say that. I'm going to bring up the other one here. Every morning in China, thousands of highly trained computer spies now wake up with one mission to steal U.S. intellectual property that the Chinese can use to further their economic growth. So clearly, Declan, um, they're trying to address this problem of cyber espionage that they are saying is harming our own economy. Um, what then do you make of that argument? Well, at root, uh, they have a perfectly reasonable argument. Uh, if, um, uh, cyber espionage is happening. It's not new. It's hard to differentiate between state actors and that is state, uh, actual governments and individuals. Uh, the, the the question is: Is the cure worse than the disease here? Uh, and you had members of Congress saying, "Absolutely, it was." I'm more worried about my own government than some teenage hackers in China, or Russia, or who knows where. Uh, and so. They're, it's, they're, they're saying this is we need uh, to allow Homeland Security and the National Security Agency to help companies, uh, but uh, and nobody's really worried about that. Uh, but what they didn't address in the floor debate was the information flow in the other direction. Read literally, this would allow, uh, um, uh, say, Yahoo to turn over all of uh, the, the email of its subscribers as long as it was for a cybersecurity purpose. I don't think Yahoo's going to be in a hurry to do that, um, but the fact that it's permissible, no search warrant required, no judicial approval, no oversight, uh, that's what's concerning. Okay, so this just passed the House moments ago. Do you expect it to pass the Senate, and what, what do you expect the Obama administration to do with it? Well, uh, first, the Senate. Uh, the Senate has been where cybersecurity bills go to die for the last few years. Uh, Senator Harry Reid has been trying to make something happen. He's kind of stymied by the 60-vote supermajority. So it's a safe bet that this is not going to move that quickly in, this, in the Senate. And so it gives opponents uh, and proponents uh, some time to uh, regroup and see what's going to happen. Uh, in terms of the president, uh, uh, the White House issued a formal veto threat this week. I mean, it's not something that's done very often, so it's worth paying attention. Uh, but the thing is that they, um, it's, they're not, it's not necessarily opposed to this on the merits. They have their own bill, which has their, has, is more regulatory, uh, and, um, targets the, the private sector more, and also uh, has its own privacy problems. I mean, uh, they're, they're not saying we don't want any bill. Uh, they're saying that w uh, we don't like this bill that has privacy issues. We like this other bill that has privacy issues. So you sound pretty confident that this bill isn't going to get very much further. Well, if you first, I mean, the, the Senate is controlled by the Democrats, and so you don't really want to go up against your president unless there's a very good reason. Uh, second, uh, there's it's it's kind of a waste of time for Congress to pursue exactly this bill because you have a veto threat. I mean, there's a, the, if you look at today's vote, is not enough to overcome a veto, most likely. Uh, so why pursue exactly but if, this? But bill? if it's a waste of time, Declan, why did they pass it so quickly today? You said without the, you know, not considering amendments. Well, they considered 14 amendments out of uh, 44, so, um, but, but they didn't consider the most privacy protective of the lot, which is, may not even be saying much. Uh, so, so why do it? Because uh, it's run by the House Republican leadership, and uh, if, if the president wants something, he, they don't necessarily have to agree. All right, Declan, thank you very much for coming on the show. That was Declan McCullough, correspondent for CNET News.